Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> uh, I've been waiting 40 years to do this, so you have to indulge me. <clears throat> in a sunlit world that he believes to be reality. But there exists, unseen by most, an underworld. One just as real that's not as brightly lit. A dark side. (laughs) Hey, ladies and germs, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Holly. Holly, yeah. Because <laughs> it felt like Colin. I know. Yeah. He's just, he's been waiting. I've been this holding is, that inside for 40 years. For 40 years. Yeah. Colin's episode. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, well, I picked Sleepy Hollow, and that was mm-hmm. kind of your episode. Kind of, yeah. Love but it, it is. Your pick tonight, it Holly. Is. What did we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. The mo- it does says that right on the front. The, the movie, movie from the year 1990. 1990. Okay, directed by John Harrison. John Harrison. What do we know John Harrison from? Right John now? Harrison. He well, he's done a lot of TV, um, but he specifically worked very closely with George Romero. Um, he was the assistant director for Night of the Living Dead, Creep Show. Okay. Um, and he he directed. Um, well, he did he did the music the music for Creep Show. Yeah, he did like, the, the yeah. music. Yes, thank you. He did the music for Creep Show, um, and then he ended up directing the Creep Show series. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah. So, and he directed Tales from the Dark Side series. Okay. So he's well, had that, his hand in a lot of TV. That and was my Dune, next question. Dune, Dune was the, big, the, the mini yeah. series. Oh, oh he gotcha. did the mini series. Yeah. The mini series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. I don't know if he's done anything like significant since then. I'm sure he's still working, but he's done like. Episodes oh, of the new Creep Show TV he show. Did, yeah, he did Creep sense. Show. Yeah, but he did episodes oh, of Tales from the okay, Crypt. Okay, yep. Okay. Um, but and he, yeah, I guess as yeah. we talk about this, it'll be even more John a lot of, and stuff. A lot of like sporadic shows, like like the Librarian stuff, like that. You know, oh, the Librarian. Like, wow, like the one with Noah. <laughs> yeah. Noah, what's his name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Noah Wiley, yeah. the Librarian, yeah, yes. and the Librarians. He, okay. Like, like sporadic episodes of TV like that. Okay. Yeah, that makes couple, sense. Yeah. Okay, that that paints a perfect picture, honestly. Yep. You know. Do you right. remember monsters? Anybody? No. Okay, so this is where, like, I think there's like when you guys talk about like the anthology shows that you know, you always mm-hmm. go with like, uh, are you uh, what is it, are, are you, you afraid alone? Of the dark, are you afraid yeah. in the dark or Goosebumps? Mm-hmm. But to me, it was always Tales from the Dark Side, <laughs> and then eventually there was you know in the Twilight Zone and mm-hmm. Amazing Stories and all that stuff. But like this show was a f- formative uh part of my childhood so is that the opening that you just <laughs> yes said? that's yeah. it every okay. week every week oh, oh okay. nice. as it that's goes like it was like this cheap like shot on vhs <laughs> opening where like a door like you're seeing a, a pastoral countryside mm-hmm. and in the middle of it like all of a sudden this it's door would on. open <laughs> and then it would go negative into like this cool. dark and then tails from the dark like side the twilight zone right yes yeah, yeah, i mean it, it was a twilight zone ripoff yeah. that yeah, was yeah. Um, was, there eye- was there a floating eyeball yeah. or a <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, none of you guys have ever seen the show. No. 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 Never seen the show. So it was produced. So George Romero founded a company called Laurel Entertainment uh, that he produced his movies uh, through. And they eventually branched into um, television. I think probably he was inspired by his collaboration with Stephen King for Creep Show, mm-hmm. the feature film Creep Show. Yeah. Yep. And so he made a weekly television show that was kind of inspired by the EC Comics, uh, you know, and that was mm. Tales from the Dark Side. And it was really low budget uh, horror show, weekly, you know, half hour, uh, and it was in syndication. And then eventually they made a show called Monsters. Um, and Monsters were like a half hour thing, but they actually had like, you know, they had monsters every week. And I would hope so. That you were getting, yeah, out of <laughs> Because if they didn't, I'd be like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Yeah, so that was like, uh, and Romero, I guess, was, I don't even know how involved he was in the shows other than his company produced them. Mm -hmm. He made some revenue off of them. 
But then eventually in 1990, <laughs> they got to make a movie <laughs> out of it. <laughs> they did. They did. But there's some other, um, so I guess Creep Show um, mm-hmm. is interesting. To, yeah, that's Monsters. Show, uh, 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 Sean is showing us some photos oh, wow. from the Monsters TV show back when they would do. You know, interesting. Before- I've seen that image. Uh, okay, it looks say- like dinosaurs, the TV show type of like a yeah. prosthetics applied to people, but they're monsters. Yeah. So that's, I guess, the way that I guess I would describe, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, yeah that's exactly it. it yeah. Um, I'm interested now. Now I want to know more. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can watch this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm curious. But Creep Show, like, mm-hmm. and we covered Creep Show on our, on our show, mm-hmm. so you can go back and listen to that episode. But um, the idea that, like, these two guys, Romero and King, kind of uh, drew from these uh, EC comics, you know, um, horror tales yeah. uh, to make the, the this movie. Uh, there was a creep show too at some point. So there was, yeah. How does creep show lead into tales from the dark side? Um, was well, there's a lot of crossover. Um, specifically, specifically one of the one of the shorts in this was supposed to be in creep show, and creep it was show two. in creep show two. Ah. Uh, the cat. The cat yep. one. The cat yep. from hell, yeah. Because that's the Stephen King story. And that was cut for budgetary reasons. And they ended up putting it in this movie. Um, so, yeah, there's there's different there's different types of ways that it's 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 inter, interweaved together. Well, there was, when did Two Evil Eyes come out? Um, was that 90 or 91? I thought 91. Was like right I thought 91. But that also had cat violence. It but, did, yeah. yeah. And that, that was, was Romero and Argento. Well, Argento, Argento did okay. the. Uh, but was Romero the other one? Yeah. Okay. But is that ironic? I guess in some now you look, you know, you think about that. If it is the same year, because um, I know it's around the same time, but um, Two Evil Eyes is like same an year. independently financed movie that George mm-hmm. Romero is in in charge of, right? Right. But at the same time, the same year, his company is getting a movie off the ground at Paramount Pictures. Mm. Like that to me is like, how come George Romero isn't the guy at Paramount Pictures, but it's John Harrison is over there. I mean, Mm. this one's written by Romero. Well, okay, so, yeah. What's the advert? The hook is like, you're going to see stories by (laughs) four ghoulish fables. What does it say? Four ghoulish fables in one modern nightmare. Was there is the four counting the wraparound? The wraparound. Okay, the I was yeah. okay. Yeah. Um. So George Romero wrote the script uh, "Cat from Hell" based on the Stephen King story. Yeah. Um. And then Michael McDowell wrote the other two stories, mm. um, Lot Two Forty Nine and Lover's Vow. Uh, both are uh, or not not both, but Lot Forty Nine Two Forty Nine is a Arthur Conan Doyle story mm-hmm. that was adapt that was ad- adapted. I can't talk tonight. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, it's my turn. And uh, uh, Lover's Vow was an adaptation. It really gets m- messy when you're just like, George, R- R- George Romero wrote the uh, script for the Stephen King story. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, really just, it's, it's hard to keep track of. That's that's <laughs> kind of the, so so Creep Show was like, you know, it's George Romero and Stephen King teaming up. And Creep Show 2, when it was finally uh, made, mm-hmm. was... You know, it's like it's the two of them teaming up again, but it was actually George Romero, I think, writing based on like he adapted Stephen King's story. Mm-hmm. So like okay. he uh, wrote the script, I think. Well, he Correct. did on the, on the first one, too. Right. Like Stephen King didn't actually. I don't know. Stephen King wrote the script to Creep Show. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. The first one. Yeah. See? yeah. And in the Messy. second one, it was Romero adapting Stephen King's stories. Mm-hmm. And so Which by the time you get to this, it's Romero adapting a Stephen King's story, right. <laughs> an Arthur Conan Doyle story. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, we're saying uh, Romero only did the, he only the, did the cat Stephen, one. Yeah. Yep. And mm-hmm. Michael McDowell was mm-hmm. a novelist, I want to say, but you would recognize his name because he wrote the screenplay to Beetlejuice. Really? Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but I think he was a horror novelist, but mm-hmm. I can't remember anything that he wrote. I think so. And Lover's Vow is, have you ever seen, I'm guessing because, well, I don't know. Have you ever seen a Japanese movie called Quiet On? Nope. No. I've heard, heard of it? it. Yeah, but I have not seen I it. 100% say I have not. Mm-hmm. Yuki Ona, I think, is the, the story. The it's story. A, this guy named Le, 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 
Lucido Hearn was a like he went to Japan and collected like Japanese folklore mm. and all these ghost stories mm-hmm. in this I think it was a book called Quiet On. It was adapted. The Japanese adapted it. But there's one story in yep. that. Yuki so if Ona. you see that movie, it's very similar, mm-hmm. only it's a ghost, right? Not yes. gotcha. what it is in that Okay. Book. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have like Creep Show. You can't do a ghost when you can do a gargoyle. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you got on. what Greg Nicotero. Um, what was it like? Dick Smith was a uh, yeah consultant. Dick Smith, yeah, yep. Dick Smith. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're watching the credits of the movie, and we're like, we're literally like cheering at every name that pops up because <laughs> like, the, Jesus. like if it isn't the 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 starring cast, yeah, the people behind the scenes are also celebrities that we're like, oh my god, oh my god, this is amazing. Like even the wraparound actors, like everybody, they really pulled Did out all the stops for this. I remember yeah. when you used to do we do we have that anymore? Or am I just missing it? The like you have these. It's like a studio horror movie, which I suppose mm-hmm. would be like the equivalent of like a Blumhouse movie now. Yeah. I don't know, but like the people who are in it go on to do like bigger, like and better things. But I can't think of anybody from a Blumhouse movie that's gone on to do bigger and better things. Bigger thing, and you're like, oh, they did that Blumhouse movie back in yeah. the day, which is kind of what this feels like, mm-hmm. right? Jamie now it's King? like you get established people to be mm-hmm. in your Blum- Blumhouse movies. Jamie King. Was was what was she in? Was um Wish Upon a Blumhouse movie? I could. I, uh, I feel like it's more like that's the A twenty four people than mm. Blumhouse people because we do have a lot of actors that get their start in horror and then immediately get cast in a Marvel right. movie yeah. or direct a horror movie and then direct a Marvel mm-hmm. movie. But, yeah, the but it's just not Taylor usually Joy's... through Blumhouse. Yeah. 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 Um, mm-hmm. We're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that 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 is still happening. Now you go from mm-hmm. art films into mm-hmm. like the the bigger movies. Um. Now you go from the art films into horror. Horror mm-hmm. is big. Yeah. All right. Um, I almost hate it when horror is big. <laughs> you stop that. <laughs> no, yeah. No, no. Well, <laughs> you know what? We'll save that for the end of the year episode. Okay. We'll get into okay. that. But I just have we're eating good this year. You showed up. I know. <laughs> no, I, it's not like I don't appreciate and don't like it, but it's just like, well, well that's something. Have they, yeah. yeah. End of the year. Question. Yeah. Does it get yeah. too big? Have, yeah. Has horror taken over where comedy No, because when be. it gets big, then you still all have the B, C, D level tier stuff underneath it. You don't have to watch just the big stuff. <sighs> I feel like I missed so much. <laughs> I watched a really bad Hulu original horror movie this week. I don't want to hear any complaining about too many mainstream horror movies. I gave up my time for a Hulu original horror movie. It was fucking terrible. So, That's what I'm saying. It's too much. Yeah, but like that was a D tier movie. Not It wasn't on the A tier. This movie never went to theaters or anything, but it probably wouldn't exist if, if all this other, yeah. if horror wasn't doing well, you know? Well, and this one, had to watch it. it's it's this, but it's the sign of a healthy movie ecosystem, <laughs> you know. Well, if it's just okay. horror dominating yeah. so much that like th- that, even the the smaller ones are attracting exactly. your attention because like that's basically it's that or, or Marvel. It's a plethora right? of options. Horror I'll take Marvel. it. Yeah. Ah, it's too many options. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my problem. It's too many options. It's too much to choose from. So this movie is an anthology. Um, there, and we should say there was a Creep Show three that was made. Yeah. Was there? Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. There mm. is. It was made direct for DVD. Yeah, from what I hear, I mean, two was such a huge drop off from the first one. I can't even imagine what three is like. I don't. I hear, anything I hear very good about bad it? things. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody good involved? I don't think there's yeah. any Stephen King, George Romero connection. No, Somebody else bought the rights. Yeah, and, there's yeah. nobody. Um, that's why Tom Savini famously says this is the actual Creep Show three. This one. Yes. Ooh, it came out in oh, 2006. Okay. That's just oh, oh no. boy. Yeah. yeah. No, there's no one famous no. in this. No. 2006. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. That's someone uh, seeing all the. Um, all the remakes and yes. the, the burgeoning horror of the mid two thousands and going, I, we've got a name that we own. Let's, yeah. let's make it mm-hmm. make so, some money off of like it. Like Return of the Living Dead, yes. Rave to the Grave, yeah. right? It's that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, about that. Uh, half the cast on IMDb for this doesn't even have pictures for their profiles. So. It's like a, yeah. it's like a bargain yeah, basement shot in your backyard yeah. indie movie that uh, you know had the license for the name, and then I think at some point they got the license back, and then it became a show on Shutter. Yeah. Right now, it's yes. a, a TV series. Um, I don't know if it's still going. I, I haven't heard right. anything lately. But it's at least three seasons of Creep Show. Um, so this is the yeah. spiritual Creep Show three. We're gonna say right, even yes. though Creep Show had five stories, Creep Show two had three stories, and yep. this has three stories, mm-hmm. three in a wraparound. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, just in the order of time, I guess we're going to go through every story, right? Yeah. As individuals, individual yeah. little movie. Well, what's the setup? How do? What's the wraparound? How do we get into this? Mm -hmm. We open with Debbie Harry is hungry. Yeah, we open with Deborah Harry, uh, cereal coming, mom, coming back, <laughs> coming back from grocery shopping, yeah. like you do. With yeah. her, dressed to the nines, dressed yeah. to the nines, with her, you know, bundle of flowers. Mm -hmm. She's on the phone with her friends, saying, "Hey, so excited about the party! Can you bring some champagne glasses?" You know. Yep. Typical suburban white housewife mm -hmm. mom type situation. In a lovely house with a lovely kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And then she turns around and opens the uh, kitchen dungeon where, she, <laughs> yeah. where, it's, where it's revealed the uh, the main course for the evening is young Matthew Lawrence. <laughs> Baby Matthew Lawrence, yes. Because fuck them kids. Yeah. 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 I, I did like how this opened up. is just like, because we don't know anything's out of the ordinary and everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we see her going home but then we see the interior of her house and uh, a door just someone trying to enter through so the door like someone hard. breaking yeah. in or someone, someone like the jiggling the knob like look something's happening behind that mm -hmm. door yeah did you see the witch's broom in that shot yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so you're wondering like ooh, what, yeah. yeah what is happening are they going out are they coming in like yeah. what, mm -hmm. is this her is this somebody else mm -hmm. she comes in a different door and is it like, a gargoyle oh. an evil cat i don't know ah, i don't know be, uh, all of the above <laughs> you know this character would love eli roth's thanksgiving that like that whole turkey baster scene, she would be like, "Oh my god, this is it. that would be like porn for her, man." Yeah, you know, she would like she would be one hundred percent by <laughs> the, the shot at the end of the movie were with her reminded me of that movie uh, a yeah, lot. It yeah, did. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But Tales from the Dark Side got did there it first. first. Yes, <laughs> uh, Debbie Harry. We should mention uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, is letting us know that Debbie Harry. We've watched three Debbie Harry wow. movies wow. on what this show. So she takes her place. What are the three movies? I that is never a great be able to tell question. You. This one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. What are the other two? Um, John Carpenter's Body Bag. Oh, oh yeah. I just mentioned you that just tonight. That. Yeah. I just watched that again. Yeah. I love and David that Cronenberg's Videodrome. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So welcome yeah, to yes. the, the wall. Your check. Uh, your check. Your 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 <laughs> certificate is in the mail. Yeah, we need no She's tax. so We're good. Not here. Like. I, I'm always Love surprised. Her. I shouldn't be surprised any, at this anymore, but I am always surprised when like a musician can cross over into acting so well. I love Debbie uh, I, She's great. And, yeah. and this every time it. we cut back to her in this movie, I was just like taken aback by her perfect bone structure in her she's face. I'm like, <laughs> gosh, she's beautiful. And she looks like that idyllic yeah. housewife. Mm -hmm. This is why mm -hmm. I did a painting of her. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's <laughs> I love her. <laughs> and she is, uh, so this is like kind of, it's like a fairy tale Hansel and Gretel Hansel kind and of Gretel, thing. Hansel and Gretel, yeah, for sure. Going on. She's fattening the kid up and she's going to serve him for this. Chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. in the so he, in order to stave off but, the but oven. She, but she does it in, in such, uh, in the nicest way. Yeah, she's very, I know. very sweet. Very she's sweet like, I give you it's cookies. Beautiful. She's like, I give you cookies. Where's that book I gave you to read? Like, she's. I gave you a book. I gave you cookies. What are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's describing what she's going to do to him later. I thought there was a monster in there. Didn't know it was going to be. Well, there is. It's a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different type of monster. Yeah. A Lawrence brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. The middle one. Well, what is. Uh, so his gambit to avoid the oven for a little period of time is that he's going to read from this book that she's given him. Because it's her favorite. It's she her loved favorite those book. stories. Mm -hmm. And it's the Tales from the Dark Side, uh, uh, leather bound mm -hmm. tome. It's a beautiful book. Yeah. Beautiful. yeah. It is a tome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gorgeous. So he proceeds to tell three stories. Uh, what's the first one? The first one is Lot 249. Yes. No. The one that felt most like an Are You Afraid of the Dark it, episode. Have you really anybody did. read this original story? No. Arthur Conan Doyle Arthur famously Conan created Doyle. Sherlock Holmes, right? Correct, yeah. I've not read this story. No. I have not either. I've read very little of... I read The Hounds of Baskerville. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I've ever read by him. Okay. Yeah. All the stuff I've read was just several of the Sherlock Holmes stories. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, obviously he did other stuff. And so he made a horror story. Maybe more than one. I can't remember. But anyway, so this one takes place in academia. And who's our cast yeah. <laughs> in this one? We have a stacked cast. Uh, this one is starring Christian Slater as Andy, who's, yep. I think... Is he our main character or is it? I think so. I think so, yeah. I think so. Uh, if it's not him, it's Steve Buscemi. Right. <laughs> um, who plays Edward. We've also got Julianne Moore, Susan. Uh, I didn't recognize the other yeah, that's, guy. That's, the other main guy. Those but are, those still, are the main like, ones, yeah. all these people, you know, even at the time, I had never Sadler? seen. Huh? Isn't it Sadler? Who? William Sadler? Mm -mm. No. no. No, who's that guy? 
He's the other, the friend, um, it was Andy and who? And, and um, oh, oh, gosh. Uh, Robert Sedgwick is the other yeah, friend. I didn't recognize oh, the actor. <clears throat> but they are, uh, like, all these actors, like Julianne Moore, mm-hmm. I believe this is, you said, this is her this first. This is her first, yeah, first movie. Um, Christian Slater had been in other stuff. He'd been in the Young Guns movies. He'd been he'd, in Heather's, he'd, I think, he'd in at Heather's, even Pump Up the Volume was at yep, this point. Yeah, I love yeah. that movie, yeah. Uh, so he was like established as, uh, you know, a, well, it was his star. I mean, yeah, you know, recognizable. Yeah, um, enough. Buscemi, I'd never he seen was in before. Teen Beat. He hadn't broken out <laughs> with cuffs yet. Yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that's one of the longer running jokes from, yeah. from yeah, this yeah, show, yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah. And we still Go back never 12 cuffs. Years. <laughs> oh, I'm still here. We'll watch it. One day. Um, I think I gave you my Blu-ray, didn't I? You gave me a DVD. Oh, I DVD. went and bought okay. a, a, a better Blu-ray. I still yeah. have the DVD, though. So I, <laughs> thank you. Actually, this is like, um, you know, as I'm thinking about it, it's like Steve Buscemi. I remember, you know, first really taking notice of him in like indie movies. Yeah. But the indie like takeover of Hollywood hadn't happened yet in 1990. It no, was that was like 94, 93. Well, it started like the next year, yeah. or something, but it crested, I think, in yeah. like 94. So like that gave him like that kind of career. Um but in this one, okay, so who who are these characters? Um, they're college students, and they're preppy college students. Mm-hmm. Very much, yeah, we <laughs> rich eighties yeah. preppy a, kids, yeah, for a, sure. I'm gonna say a squash game, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's they have, tennis. I know it's tennis, it's but tennis. I'm just gonna say squash because it sounds yuppier. <laughs> it does sound yuppier. <laughs> if this were made in 2024, they'd be playing pickleball. Yep. Probably 100. percent But I wouldn't. If they're playing pickleball, I might hate them less because pickleball is fun. Squash I'm understood. tired of hearing about pickleball. True. I get, so shut the has, fuck up about pickleball. You're right. oh my coming God. from a cricket match. <laughs> yeah. Then, but, yeah. Right, right. Right. But, but they are in the uh, requisite gear yeah. for tennis. Mm-hmm. Uh, the short sweaters. shorts, the yeah, sweaters the, over the shoulders, sweaters, the white the outfits shorts. and everything. So. Per a George Romero movie, there is a disdain for the uh, the wealthier class. Which I respect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. always his. Relatable. Yeah. Yeah. For Pittsburgh King. Yeah. He's all about the working men. You know, yep. I love it. So his protagonist, I think, well, he didn't write this one, but I guess no. that, uh, is Steve Buscemi, right? He, yep. So the idea is um, Christian Slater, uh, right, and his best friend. Yeah, Christian Slater is like the neutral party in this, mm-hmm. right? Which I guess makes him the hero by default. No, the hero. He's, but, yeah. he's like the anti-hero, the hero. I don't know. There's no one. No one's winning in this one. Well, there's like a moral dilemma yeah. that he kind of bypasses. So. His friend, and uh, who's the rich kid, yeah, and the uh, the poorer kid, which is right. uh, Steve Buscemi, right, were vying for a scholarship, yeah, right. So his or best friend, so his his best friend, the other yuppie, going for this fellowship, and then his his best his other friend who lives in the same dorm, also going for the fellowship. Rich kid, poor kid. Yeah, but the smarter mm-hmm. kid is the poorer kid. The dumber Correct. kid is the rich kid. But- my my biggest problem with this is when they reveal that Julianne Moore does all of his homework for him. What girlfriend is doing all of her boyfriend's homework? The smarter one. It's saying he's Why? dumb. Right? No, I get that. Yeah. What we, but what's but what is she getting out yeah, of it? Yeah, exactly. Like maybe he's got you- more. His family has more money. It's a family thing, right? She's mm-hmm. marrying. She wants to marry into the. Is that it? That she, oh, maybe. Is that yeah. it? She wants the family money, so mm-hmm. she's like, "I'll do your homework for you." I'm I think so. I just I need to understand the, yeah. the trade even, here. Even after he's gone, like she doesn't seem to care too much, and she insults the ring that mm-hmm. he got her. Right, like, that's he never true. really had taste. She was going for money. Because like, I'm trying to think, like, and if it were me, I'm not going to do someone's homework just because I love them. And she didn't nope. even love him. No, no. I think it's it's status. Okay. I think in that that's what he's he's saying. You know, right? That that they're playing for status. Okay. The fellowship gives you status. You know, all this okay. other stuff. And so she's hitching herself to that uh, the the money. Yeah, the I'll do your money. homework if you let me tag along. Yeah, yeah. But okay. she okay. assists in this plan to basically. She's like the Lady Macbeth, right? Uh, <laughs> she sabotages the mm-hmm. other guy because the other guy fancies her. So she takes advantage of that to accuse him of theft of a, it's like a Zuni a Zuni fetish. a Zuni fetish artifact. It's a trinket. So yeah. it's, not, it's a so little no dolls, but Zuni fetish. Yeah, looks like a little wiener dog. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Doesn't look particularly just, sinister. Yeah, it's no. like a little rock sculpture. Yeah, ba- yeah, basically. Yeah. But Steve Buscemi's character has a fascination with uh, antiques, archaeology, ancient history, and 
mummies. Yeah. My, uh, yeah, that's this is my other problem with this one is that he's apparently he's studying these things. I don't know if he's studying history, if he's studying like archaeology. I don't know what he's studying, but he's clearly never handled these things before. No, no. This drove me absolutely crazy. How do you mean? He's just, oh, ta- he's yeah, just he's just tearing into it. Back. Like, yeah. oh, we'll just cut these shrouds off and we'll just touch everything with my bare hands. I'll like, just shove my hands inside. Just shove money. my hands inside. And like, yeah. A real student wouldn't do this. This does, and this is, this is what I think works against the story. Is especially when you put it up against the other two. Is like those kind of processes and like the way they approach things feels very dated. And yeah. so it's obvious that this is an older story adapted because yeah, like you said, watching this, we'd be like, well, this is not how they would do this. That's not. But well, back in like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle time, yeah, yeah. They probably did right. just shove back hands when, up mummies. You back know, when the British Museum was still stealing things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's like because I, I think that's where it probably came from, like the twenties yeah. or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, fascination with mummies, and now it's like okay, in nineteen ninety, they got a lot of this is going on in like dorm right. rooms, or right. people are having yeah. mummies yeah. still over. <laughs> no concern. No concern for preservation. Yeah, no, whatsoever, no. and whatever might right. be in. He's like, and they're just like, tur- and they're just like turning up their nose. Like someone's gonna buy this. It's a mummy. Of yeah. course, someone's gonna like, buy yeah. it. Yeah. How the fuck did you get it? It's well, a mummy like, in yeah, a sarcophagus. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like this is somebody. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you know, it's like as a mummy, right? You're like, okay, we're gonna get a mummy movie. You get a mummy that's in the bandages. As a mummy, as a mummy, <laughs> yeah, as a mummy. And they, they Speaking immediately like cut the bandages. As a mummy, off. I am offended. <laughs> as a mummy, I am down. Well, as a mummy movie, I guess we know we're gonna get that story. So they immediately like cut the bandages off, which I thought was kind of like, okay, but you uh, want a mummy? You shouldn't you have the bandages? You wouldn't cut the bandages. The- so you then wouldn't we cut get, them off. You this, wouldn't. No, you wouldn't cut them off. If nothing else, maybe maybe the face, or maybe during the. I know it's only a, a short, but maybe during the process of this, like stuff starts falling off. But why cut off all the good stuff that makes him a mummy? I know. So you wanted the bandage guy walking around? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah. I get that, but also I see that they're like, okay, well we've seen that before, so we're going to do something new. Is it better? I like the bandage guy myself, yeah. you know, but it's like, okay, in this one, you're going to get a desiccated, dusty, moldy corpse. So you can kind of, he's all dried out. You can he's smell him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're I feel told like that they could have still gotten that effect with some shrouds. Yeah. yeah. Some, we'll just have something just some on of there. them. Yeah. yeah. I think that this movie has an uphill battle because like as a society, mummies are not a thing we care about. You know what I'm saying? I like, disagree. This is not... <laughs> I care very much. I guess about not it. in a horror context, right? Like, like it's not a good horror monster because it's just it's so. Not, it's, it's, it's just it's dust. Like we talked scary. about, it's dust. You it's know? Well, I mean, that's the thing because I never. It's like, interesting if you're studying part. Egypt. It's not interesting right. in a horror not anthology. Scary. You know? Yeah, it's not scary. Ever. I think it used part. to be because it was like this moldy yeah. corpse that was walking around. Oh, like, that's that is scary, be. but. But now, and I mean, when it you comes can to tell, like the Universal monster movies, the Mummy is still one of the best ones. Yeah, but that now, really whenever good. they do it, they really have good. to amp it up, and it's barely a sham. It doesn't age well. Like that's something the thing. you yeah. control in the, in the new one, you know, yeah. with sand yeah. and it has not, magic powers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So they, yeah, because they're like the dead guy walking around doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, because now we know of mummies is just like, oh, if you grab his arm and rip it the wrong way, it'll come off and they'll fall apart. Yeah, I think that's how we know mummies now. He was dropping dust all over. It was a pretty good makeup effect. We were joking. You could defeat him with a bucket of water in this movie because yeah. you probably could. Like, <laughs> so mummies not... are the laziest you, of monsters. You, yeah, yes, yes they are. Water, he'd go ah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he is. Like, uh, he's like, like oh, tub. I've been waiting twenty like, thousand oh, years yeah. for this bath. Oh, it's good. <laughs> this was the first movie, and this ever this stuck with me. And actually, I had to look this up because the idea that uh, that when they embalmed them, they like put the poker up their nose and yeah. swelled yeah. it up and pulled their brain out their Show nose. That was the first that, time though. I ever heard that. I mm-hmm. was like, oh my god! And then they cut them open and mm-hmm. removed their organs and stuffed them. But uh, Steve Buscemi finds a scroll, and we're like, oh, here it goes, here right? It goes. Mm-hmm. Classic mummy shit. He can now control the mummy. Good mm-hmm. thing he can read it. Mm-hmm. Yep, and is going to use it to get his revenge on his most tormentors. Most college students can read hieroglyphics. Yeah, but he's uh, studying. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> Holly is a non-believer. I'm a non-believer. I believed Steve Buscemi was that guy, though. He's a good performance. He is. Like, he's great. Yeah. Love the Buscemi. So good that I didn't understand why anybody else hung out with him. Yes. I wouldn't hang out with this guy. No. Seems like a right. just like Well, a, they all seem awful to be fair. Yeah, that's they do true, all seem true. terrible. Maybe they don't. I have think that's enough. the problem with this story too, right? Is that everyone sucks. So everyone it's just sucks. like you just everyone there's no suck. emotional investment if everyone sucks. Rooting right? for the money. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because why are you, you know? why are <laughs> yeah. you not rooting for Christians? Fly away in your wings of rapping. Um, 
Well, I was until he made mm-hmm. a choice that I didn't understand at all. Correct. Yeah. Which was? He he gets Steve Buscemi ready to like light him up on fire, chained up by the fireplace, to get vengeance for his best friend and sister being murdered, Valid, and then lets him go because what? Yeah. Yeah, Why? What reason valid. does he have to let him go? That emotional element wasn't there. Again, no. I realize this is a shortened version of, yeah. of any of this. But yeah, I didn't feel like he cared like that, his bro- good, that his sister th- yeah. and friend died. Like there was a good bout of craziness. And I was like, okay, I'm on board for Crazy Christians later. Let's sure. do this. If you snap at a certain point. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, never mind. I'm just going to set you free now. If well, you well, he's, not gonna, he's not a killer. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. And well, he, then he, what was he doing? I think he releases Steve Buscemi because he also... Re- realizes Steve Buscemi isn't a killer like if I let him go he's not gonna harm me we're not actually so gonna you think but he him. still I mean, murdered your sister true. and best friend but he that's still right. murdered your sister and best friend so yeah like why would you like no I wouldn't and think, just because I wouldn't you're... think if I let him go he wouldn't harm me I'd be like this guy will has killed uh, sent this he's <laughs> he killed everyone around me mummy after two people <laughs> and killed them you can't trust anything he's gonna right do at that point. and just because you're murdering him doesn't mean you need to let him go free either right. there's a middle ground here but the justice also, system can work here you know something. but he's yeah. going like nobody's gonna believe that that's you know. true he can't so, like turn him into the cops what's he gonna say so he, well, why did you Steve saw did the it. mummy yeah well, he saws up the mummy to take away the ability he has to murder anybody, and he burns the... Uh, well, he's staking into the ground. He's not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. And he, he's well, dust. Yeah. And then he can prove that it's still... <laughs> it's you know, alive. Saying? Right. He yeah. bring in cops who like, that thing killed two people. Yeah. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and Steve Buscemi made him do it, so he's an accomplice. Yeah, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So. All right. Now I've told you, deal with it, yeah. cops, and then you yeah. walk away. Yeah. You know, there was another thing about this movie that it was an interesting choice, and I don't know if it's good direction uh, or bad. If this was the problem with it, but like, I'll tell you what. often we had, we were verbally saying like, nobody shows really any emotion. So Julianne Moore's character, when she sees her boyfriend is dead, doesn't like react no. like at all. And so I'm like, okay. She gives a, <gasps> just for the shock yeah, of finding yeah. a dead body. Even when the mummy's coming after her, I guess what we're used to seeing is the woman screaming in fear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I suppose that like. I don't know if I've been conditioned. I read that as like, okay, this is the scary part. And when the woman isn't reacting at all, then it's like, she has, this is like a psychopath. Like she, cause I mean, her uh, reaction to all the other characters is like manipulative and mm-hmm. you yes. know, I really didn't care about him at all. And she has no emotion, even when she's being chased by an undead. No one in this creature. first story is reacting how they should be reacting. No. Yeah. What, no. So does that, but I'm saying, I don't know if that was an intentional thing. Like we're going to try something different. And, and she's like, no, you know, there's a mummy here and I'm going to react rationally it feels and like, be like, okay, I can deal with this and move out of its way or whatever. I feel like that is, uh, I think that is the decision of the movie because it happens for all of them. Would it have been better if she was screaming in fear? Would you have gotten more of a like, oh my God, there's a mummy in the room with her. You know what would, I mean? Yeah, it would have like it would have helped me, I think. But again, I don't know. It also doesn't help that this story doesn't like show us any good gore moments, really. Like, like compared it starts to, to yeah, like if you're gonna put the hook up the nose, show me the brains coming out. You yeah, know, pull that brain out. especially because the other two stories really go far with the gore effects. So mm. why is this one like that? Was the one moment it felt like it was leading to, and then it yeah. just cut away, and that was disappointing. Yeah, I right? was, there's a lot of blood in it, but I yeah. wonder if it was cut out. Yeah, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. one of those things you wonder if like the ratings Ooh. board back oh, then maybe. because maybe. they had the brain. Yeah, we see it. Yeah. Right. Mm. I wonder. Yeah, give me that brain getting pulled out yeah. of his yeah. nose. They go for it with like the hook is already up there swirling around. Yes. You just yeah. don't see it pull out. Pull right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there is a, a twist ending um, where it turns out right. Christian Slater has not burned the correct scroll, uh, scroll because right. <laughs> he doesn't, he can't tell the difference between a <laughs> yeah. third century uh, whatever I, and a... I like the joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that, tr- that, that fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that troglodyte. He's such an idiot. More. And so the yeah. uh, the zombies of his uh, sister and best friend show up at the end, presumably to kill him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, on to the second story, um, which is which? Cat from Hell. Okay, so All who's right. who's who's in this one, and what's the what's the setup? Uh, this one. Um, oh wait, we should no. we should mm-hmm. say sorry, mm-hmm. uh, Christian Slater. Uh, welcome oh. to the Saturday night. Yay! Oh, right. Tuffs Christian is not going to get him on the wall. Mm-hmm. No, you want to know what did? Yeah. Was Heather's done on this? No. Pod? No. But it was this uh, movie. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. Christian Slater 
In the movies, we would have picked down here. Hmm, that's a tough one. You remember Broken Arrow? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That was a good time. And True Romance. We also gotcha. need True Romance. I was, romance I was gonna say the other one has got to be True Romance. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what okay. I was thinking about watching this is Christian Slater's in this, and James Remar is also in this. Christian Slater. Oh my God! It's is, both Dexter's oh, dad. It's both Dexter's dads <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> because original sin is coming out like six weeks from now, yeah. and Christian, Christian Slater is playing, is playing a younger version of James Remar. Yeah, love that. Yeah, love that. Wow, it all comes together. It does. That's yeah, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't see it still. The casting does not make <laughs> no, sense. No, zero sense. It makes zero sense. But I, I'll, I'm signed up. I'll, I'll board that yeah, dream. I'll still watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the cat from hell? Who's in it? And what's, uh, what's going on? Uh, cat from hell. We have William Hickey. Bill Hickey. Mm-hmm. Bill Hickey. Yeah. Who used to be recognizable, like you know, in <laughs> yeah. that he area. He still is. I mean, he's yeah. still recognizable. <laughs> he's recognizable for one for specific one thing, thing and that is Christmas vacation. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She died 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. What if I told you? Don't push me down, Clark. <laughs> that we're putting William Hickey on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh my God! <laughs> We've done three of his movies. Holy shit! No way! Fantastic! Yeah. What have we done? No idea. Yeah, okay. I've got nothing. So this yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, puppet Master. He puppet was. Master. He was the Puppet Master. He is that the Puppet sense. Master. That makes puppet sense. Master. Right. Okay. And uh, the Sentinel. The oh Sentinel. Oh my God! <laughs> the Sentinel's the answer to so many things. It is because it's weird. Yeah. I was watching this going black and white cat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was because the, yeah. the flapper ladies. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. And the cat. That's, That's amazing. Funny. That man yeah. was like always old as hell. Always. Always. Him and, him and Mark Margolis, always old men. Yeah. Yeah, because he's in this too. Yeah. He's, he's also in the skit. He's also in the skit, yeah. yeah. What'd you call it? I called it a skit. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> segment. I meant segment. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And who's the other main player in this? Oh, uh, the David, librarian from Ghostbusters. The, the librarian from Ghostbusters and David Johansson. Yeah. Yeah. I had an uncle who thought he was St. Jerome. I'm sorry. Buster Point. Buster Point Dexter. Dexter. <laughs> he was a singer, right? Like, he was. Yeah. yeah. He huh? was from the New, New York, York Dolls, Dolls. Yeah. and then, Dolls and then, then eventually mm-hmm. went on hot, hot, to hot. be yeah. Buster yeah. Poindexter. I remember yeah. that. I remember Poindexter. Scrooge. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's like my my experience with Buster Poindexter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did he go? He's still around. Is he? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you say that watch, I bet he's dead. <laughs> nah, well, do I have, maybe Dude. that is my my, my uh, stupid superpower. Yeah. Just thinking people are alive when they're dead and thinking they're dead when they're alive. <laughs> no, I did something at work not so long ago where he was featured and I forgot what it was. Hmm. Yeah, I was just doing a story on him for whatever reason. Yeah, he was the lead yeah. singer of New York Dolls. Yep. And then went on his solo career as Buster Poindexter. He is still alive. All right. He's yeah, I've seen him. Recently. 74 years old. Good. He's still alive. He's done all right. Approaching I think William Hickey age. Taller. Yeah. yeah. He truly is. So who are these characters? So uh, Bill Hickey is Drogon. Yes. Who is a uh, pharmaceutical manufacturer, or he owns a, mar- a pharmaceutical manufacturing company. The true Basically, villains yeah. of the yeah. world. See Montgomery Burns. Yep. Yes, yes. He's Basically. Mr. Burns. Yep. Yeah. Also a George Romero yes. theme. He's like just going right in. <laughs> <laughs> I support all of it. Yeah. Yes. And Buster Poindexter is a hitman. Uh, yeah. I mean, why not? Yep. Brought in yeah. for a special job. I always love this. I so love this. like, but you say a pharmaceutical um, a magnate. Mobile. So yeah. the, the viewer might think like this is going to take place at some kind of, you know, white walled, you know, well-lit facility, but it's no. A, it's dust, a mansion. A dusty mansion at mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Because he's old bunny. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. This guy. Oh, yeah. Wheelchair, Wheelchair bound. Uh, that, that plaid red blanket over his lap. Like yep. The, the FDR do. look. Yes. 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 Like, the <laughs> the <FDR laughs> it's always sunny. That's right. an It's always sunny joke. <laughs> it is the There's FDR an episode look. of It's Always Sunny where they're pretending to be in wheelchairs and Matt gets a blanket. He's like, I figured I'd give myself the old FDR look <laughs> with yep. the blanket. So, <laughs> yeah. But he, he, so Spot it, on. And yeah. it has like the, it's like Xanadu, right? You yeah. go yes. see Charles Foster and Cage. Yeah. There's a big fireplace. Yes. And the hitman, right, mm-hmm. arrives. Mm-hmm. By cab, the hitman, of course, well dressed. I always love this. That like, oh yeah, hitmen hair are slicked like, back, nice yeah. suit, nothing but the best. You gotta be for suave, me. yeah. 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 And what do you suave. want? You want a homeless hobo looking hitman? He's like, I, I mean, I, I do want a hitman hand. that doesn't draw attention to himself because yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, you gotta blend in. Yeah. But he works in wealthy circles, and the well, guy. I mean, he course, blends in when he's on. Uh, well, I mean, I would say he blends in when he's on the job. Yeah. Not, when they taking the meeting, you gotta look good. Yeah. That's fair. You gotta look like Buster Point. <laughs> That's right. He's killing people in high society. That's mm-hmm. what I yeah. like. How do I get this job? 
Yeah. You know, like, you do you gotta know you gotta somebody? Yeah, is this well, like a can, connections uh, thing? Think, uh, bog witch first. A bog witch first. <laughs> <laughs> then assassin. I'm just assassin saying, bog like, witch. There seems to be a difference between like man for hire and then, like them being like the assassin of the wealthy, right? Do you yeah. have to like work your way up to oh, be the assassin definitely. of the wealthy? Okay. Because yeah. you have to yeah. be trustworthy. Yeah, go right? on, you have to prove yourself. Yeah, go on yeah. the whole nine yards. Yeah. I'm sure Bruce Willis explains it to a T. Yeah. So the contract killing is who's the target? The target. I love this because he's like, the target is right behind you. Yep. And Buster Point Dexter turns around and there is the cutest little black cat. <laughs> they, you know, this is like the least menacing cat they it's could find. So like this cute. cat's face is round. Its eyes are big. It is right. just a tight, it's, it's small. It's a small yeah, cat. And every cat. time they show it, it's like, meow. Yeah, it's yeah. every time. And it does those happy chirps at one point and they try to play it off like it's menacing. And I'm like, like I no, know. Every cat, cat owner knows the happy yeah. chirps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's a death and it's looking over a ledge going like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So cute cats love pushing stuff off a ledge and looking down. That's what they right. do. Yeah. yeah, cats also assassins because they have tried. If you own yep. a cat, you oh, yeah. trying yep. to kill you at some point. Yep. Oh yeah, dreaming of trying mm-hmm. to kill. A lot you. of close calls living with a, lot a cat. Of close calls. Yeah, yeah. Well, what? Why does this eccentric old guy want this cat dead? Because this cat has now killed three people in this house. <laughs> Which, okay, that is alarming. Like, <laughs> three people is a lot, you know. Like, right, and, one person. Okay, yeah, maybe we can push maybe it, it was an and, accident. And maybe yeah. that's an accident. Yeah. Three and people. All of them have happened at midnight. Yep. yep. And uh, specifically, this drug that he's developed mm. uh, was tested on cats. So How many cats, Ollie? Five thousand. <laughs> Just Killed 5,000 right. cats in You're one movie. responsible for all those deaths. Those were not shown on screen. <laughs> they don't matter. count. Dude, they that don't. is a cat. Holocaust it doesn't though. count. They do. There was not one cat death you in this movie. You are now above me. There was not one cat <laughs> death in this movie. Deaths. Nope. Nope. You doesn't count. Above me. Does not Dead. count. So, Does not count. Not Dead. one cat death. <laughs> So this is all like, you know, it sounds like, I mean, I suppose it could be like a paranoid uh, old guy's uh, imagination, but, you know, sure. I mean, if you kill that many cats, you should be paranoid that karma's going to come get you, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. If a cat shows up and people start dying, like, that's, that's yeah. for me. Yeah, but the, but I but says. I love this scene when he's like with the cat's like on Buster Poindexter's lap and he was like, oh yeah, I'll kill this cat. That's fine. I'll wring its neck right now and then it like attacks him and runs away. And he's like, oh, it's not gonna be that easy. I'm taking the cab and I'm gonna leave. Yeah, yeah. while you do this job. Yep, yep. I love that. Yeah. So like, he leaves him alone in the house with this cat. Um, well, we do get to see, like, in flashback, like, how the cat killed right. his <laughs> sister. Two evil eyes, wasn't the... Didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Two evil so, eyes is very similar. Yeah. yeah. Very similar. Except Harvey Keitel got drunk and killed a cat. Yeah. For real. Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah, pretty sure. Cool. Yeah. Boy, yeah, I got the urge to rewatch that movie recently, and then I remember that. I was like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. I think I'm good. Yeah. I think I'm I'll, I'll hold off he a little bit. He convincingly murders It's yes. a very... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a convincing... Yeah. Drunk Harvey Keitel goes after a cat. Um, so, uh, the flashbacks I thought were handled, uh, oh, intri- very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's they're, like, blue. It's like, they're blue, but they're like staged, uh, or, but like a stage play when you yeah. have to switch yeah. lighting to go from one thing. If you are going to a flashback, it's or just a like over the shoulder lit differently. And yes. then the front person di- like goes out of the light. Like yep. it's, it's, yeah, it, it's very good. It's I like very that. good. Yeah. I like Which it. Is, it's, I mean, it's interesting that it's, uh, confined to just this story. I guess that kind of gives us this story its own personality yeah mm-hmm. it's I think a it does. directorial flair that like you're like oh okay that, you know that's interesting that is yeah. one thing about this movie i felt I, I could feel that all three stories were very separate yeah. well actually all four. all four yeah, all do. four were very separate yeah. which i liked not i mean not uh, add to the fact that they were scored by four different people yeah that yeah part written by three different people, written by so, different people. i'm a shot did we know is it shot by different people for all we know <laughs> no, no it was one guy robert okay. draper okay. did the, well he did a very good job of, of using lighting well done yeah. sir. differently for <laughs> yeah. each one yeah um so the hitman is left alone mm-hmm. in the house uh and then goes off to try and kill the cat you know because i think at first he's like okay with, with increasing good. frustration yes. yeah 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 as this thing like jumps out of the dark and attacks him, uh, scratches him in the face, mm-hmm. he's gonna wander around and inject it with something, but not after it goes for his balls. It's really like watching Tom and Jerry, but reversed. Yeah, yeah for sure. This cat is always two steps ahead. This cat's always. awesome. Yeah, like, you know, for a little while, all we get is like flashes of cat going by camera, and then marks yeah. on on Buster Poindexter as he gets you know torn up. And I like that he's just like playing pool and like casually talking to the cat, like mm-hmm. in the corner. <laughs> hey, cat, you figure you get it? And the cat comes up and all of a sudden, yeah, is uh, scratching the shit out of his dick. Yeah. 
And then oh, uh, right. he's like, you motherfucker. You know, <laughs> then I liked it, the, that cut, that comedic cut to the, the and then he breaks out the big gun. He you does. know, the, with the laser sight on it. It's yeah, because like, he keeps going back to his little briefcase of weapons and the, the weapons keep increasing. Yeah, they yeah. do. Well, even the way that the cat was killing people in the flashbacks. Well, that's I what I was, was going to say. Like, we got to talk about how, uh, I mean, because there's been murders leading up to this yeah. application. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he killed the f- uh, the sister, you, the, the first lady. Yep. Not that's the one he tripped and knocked down the stairs. Yes. Yeah, as yes. cats do. As yeah, they that's, do. That's a very normal yeah. thing. Right. You the, real right there. But the yeah. second one was great. Second yeah. one oh, was, was the the librarian, the from, librarian Ghostbusters. from Ghostbusters. Uh, gets suffocated <laughs> yeah. by the cat. And you always hear about get... like the cat like sucks your breath out or it whatever. It is on her face here. like a face it's hugger. On... It is. Yeah. What, but like, this is what every digs its claws every person, into her head. Every person in like the nineties was afraid of the, the, when they're having a newborn. Like keep mm. the cat away from it, otherwise it'll suffocate. The cat will suffocate the baby. Yeah. Happens to this lady. And yeah, this is where we get into the <laughs> fake cat part. Of yeah. The thing, yeah, which is always my favorite. It's so great. It's so good, but it is a rat. It is a face hugger wrapped around her <laughs> yeah. head, and she's like <laughs> smothers her to death. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's just screaming in cat. <laughs> it is. Like, <laughs> and the third guy it uh, gets loose in the car with right. them and causes they, a they car fi- accident. He finally, it's like the handyman. He finally catches him. He's going to take him to the vet to put him down. Yeah. get rid of this cat. In the car on the way there, stroke of midnight, the cat gets loose. Goes like attacks him from all sides in the car, and then the car flips and he dies in a car accident. One week later, yep. the cat the cat came back. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, I guess uh, he uh, gets so frustrated. I guess that's what you're watching, right? Him get like so frustrated after this cat, he spends all of his ammo blowing the shit out of the house. Ammo from what? The cannon with the laser the sight on it. Gun. <laughs> one of the greatest guns in cinema history. Oh, he say. shoots the cat at it's one a, point, it though. Does. It's a desert eagle with a, a, a barrel extension and a fucking red dot. Yeah, on it. it's, a red dot sight. <laughs> it's amazing. But he shoots the cat at one point, and the bullet goes through it. Oh, I had you dead to rights or yeah. whatever. So it's a ghost mm-hmm. cat mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And then the cat uh, jumps him the, oh, and yeah. crawls down his throat. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a, it is a very detailed scene. Yes, yeah. Amy gag a little bit. It, oh yeah, because this cat is quite literally crawling down his throat. Wet, it, like it's isn't... wet. It's wet. Oh, it's, it's wet. And it takes where, a long time. It takes too. a yeah. really long where time. Other movies might not have the confidence, budget, or what have you. To they would. Maybe look away from something like this. <laughs> not, not this the exact movie. opposite is yeah. true for this. Yeah, they yeah. hang they, on they, it. They, they go they, for they it. They built. They, they they knew what they were. Just like this cat is going to crawl into his throat. Yeah, yeah. and we're like we're going to show all of it. Yeah. Like, oh, we're okay. going to show every and so it second. Does. This is what you're going to remember from this movie. Is this cat and, crawling down this guy's but, into this guy's and mouth? And not in one swift motion. No, no, no. And it's then, a struggle. And you think it's over? It's not over. No, no it's not over. <laughs> I love that. But he crawls down his throat. Yeah. As Buster is like, is calling, and, and you can in. you can almost see him doing the cat thing, you're like circling in his belly to lay down. Well, that's like, what, like, he was it. looking for a warm yeah. spot to lay down. He's just he's just circling around, and he curls up and you know goes to sleep. And then yeah. Bill Hickey comes home. He's like son of a bitch, and he sees the body of Buster Poindexter laying there with the mouth wide open, like yeah. an unhinged snake jaw. Like a cat, I just crawled through it. Right, like you, like you know. And you think it's over. It's not over. They show the cat crawl out of his mouth. Yep. And what's brilliant about this is they use an actual cat here. Yeah. There's a little uh, poke out, I think, maybe a little fake cat, but the rest is just like full cat crawling out of a uh, bust. Yeah, that Definitely last shot is a, a real, cat. Is oh, a yeah, real yeah. cat crawling out of the fake mouth. And it's, yeah. it's, once again, it's wet. This it's, cat's all right. wet. It is, like, it is, yeah. it is, it is chest burster, yeah. but it is cat. Yeah. Oh, great and then it's just acting. like, Meh. yeah, yep. Oh, it's great. Shout it is. It's disgusting. And it's great. It's beautiful. And it gives uh, William Hickey a heart attack. That's right. Aww. As he's trying to put the the pills that uh, he manufactured right yep. to yes, save off the heart attack. His heart. Yep. No, the cat. Cat done. got him. On to the next story. That's the cat from hell, so, yeah. <laughs> is that how that one ends? Yeah. yeah. Them being dead. He dies yeah. and the cat's licking itself on his right, lap. Yeah. And yeah. then we're out. That's it. Uh, the third story then is Lover's Vow. Lover's Vow. Right, because uh, Debbie Harry has been wanting. She's like the She's, romantic one. She ones loves are her a favorite. love story. Loves a love story. That's yeah, her favorite. For one of those. And uh, Ma- little Matthew Lawrence promises this one is, is a love story. And she's like, but there's no happy endings. And he's like, well, it's a love story. Yeah. So and James Remar is, is in this vow. one. 
and James Remar. Welcome to the Saturday Night wow. Freak Show Yay! Wall wow. of Fame. Uh, wow. So what were the three movies that the we Warriors. did? The Warriors. Yes. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. This one. Wait, I know the other was one because I was here for it. Shit, and it was one? The Phantom. The Phantom. Not a freak show movie. No. But a movie I like. <laughs> there you go. Slam Evil is the slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For the Phantom. <laughs> Billy the movie, Zane. Uh-huh. It would have been Bruce Campbell at one point, but it's Billy True. Zane. I love True. Billy Zane. Um, so it's him and um, well, Ray John, Ray Don Chong, Chong is also yep. in it. Uh, and I'm like, I know I've seen The Running Man is the only thing that I can. Robert no, that's Klein. Marina Conchita Alonso, right? Who was Re, uh, uh, Radon Chong. Chong in? And what? She was in something we watched not that long ago. Yeah, I've seen her in something before. Yeah. She's in Commando. 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 Everyone hates it. Pitching their steering wheel. That's right it. Now. <laughs> Everyone hates us yeah. so much right yeah. now. Yep. Um, it is Commando, though. Yeah. So I'm assuming she's part Asian. With that name, I'm assuming. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm right? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. Just because when you uh, Radon Chong, like, I yeah. would expect her. Right. To yeah. show up. You know right. what I mean? Um, she, uh, well, okay. So James Remar mm. is mm-hmm. an artist, a mm-hmm. frustrated artist, right? Correct. In New York City in a loft, of course, mm-hmm. a shadowy New York City loft. And he uh, builds garbage. Right. And not doing very well. His fortune. He's making fucking popsicle stick art. I'm right? sorry. <laughs> if you want me to take your artist character seriously and move beyond preschool crafts, come on. Like, <laughs> this is. Like, I seriously, can't believe this is how we, we meet him. We open with him building. And Michaela's right. It's like yeah. popsicle sticks. It's like a plane. Yeah. It looks like something I made in tech ed and eighth Exa- grade. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah, but maybe that come was on, the frame man. for some kind of sculpture that he was building. Did you see his garbage? No. <laughs> so. It's his not building that different from what he actually ends up putting in an art exhibit. Yeah, seriously, it's boards. His, his boards. um his building Adult popsicle sticks we'll call yeah. them. boards. Yeah, boards. driftwood art. Well, it has a yeah. the the Drift, the driftwood's usually cooler. Yeah, exactly. The apartment These are has two an by interesting fours. feature. Sorry, it's got a, a skylight. The voice. <laughs> there's a skylight, and above the skylight, there's a gargoyle, and the gargoyle sits up there and watches him all day long. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's maybe not the way you're supposed to. I think that's no. how you're supposed to take it. Pre- no, well, I think that is how you're supposed to take it. Yeah. Do we ever? Did they ever flash over the gargoyle? Yeah, at the very beginning. The it's very looking, beginning. It's, it's, it's okay. like the gargoyle. They show, over they show the, shoulder. The, the stone gargoyle okay. is like. I was wondering. Is at the top of the building, like looking down on his uh, his window. Okay. Yeah. So it's been watching okay. him forever. I think is what you're supposed to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes to a bar drunken one night to meet his agent right. and fires him. His and agent's like, you're not bringing in any money, so I don't make any money. So we're through. Yeah. Which I'm this sorry, guy, that's kind of legit. But this guy's the opposite of Giancarlo Esposito and Maxine. Because that guy would have <laughs> been like, you're in a slump, baby. Don't worry. We'll fix it. We'll find you some we'll work. Find like, you. We'll do something Yeah, for you. yeah, exactly. Don't you worry. Yeah. Maybe this and is don't you worry. That, we're going to yeah. talk about him at some point. Yeah, yeah. Like, He's like uh, down the road. Yeah. yeah, but isn't he like, hey, uh, you, you know, it's like I can't live ten percent of nothing. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah or whatever. Yeah. And you make nothing. I can't. You, you know, he, yeah, James Ringer was like, I can't. I can't live off nothing. It's like, to, I can't live off ten percent of nothing. Yep. To be fair, I don't like. What level of famous do you have to be to have an agent as an artist? Like, right? This is not something you use agents for. Is like, that just a New York? Like, if you're in the New York art scene, like, but I would you, assume you have you some agent? level of success if you haven't. He agent shouldn't because be broke. you're paying them. Yeah, it's like yeah. he has an agent yeah, to begin with. It, exactly. So he was something exactly. yeah, at some yeah. point. He had then, to have yeah. been. Yeah, it's not marketable now. Apparently, yeah. apparently, and because so, they're not like actors. The, the agent is not going out there and finding work for you. That's not how it right. works with an artist. They're getting so that's bookings why it doesn't make sense. And galleries. Like, yeah, I guess that's what yeah. they're doing. But yeah, yeah. convincing yeah. people to put yeah. your art in a gallery right. for an opening. But again, you have needless cost. You have to be you have to be very successful to have someone doing that for you. Yeah, exactly. And so he's artists don't want to talk to people to get their art shown. They just yeah. want to make the art. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. it. But right? unfortunately, yeah, it's his, all yeah. about networking and that yeah. sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, his yeah. fortune is about to change this night because he goes out in the alley with the bar owner who's locking up and like, I'll take you home. Yep. And what happens? They're attacked. Bye. <laughs> the bar owner is decapitated. <laughs> decapitated, <laughs> yeah. Which also gets brought up later. But yes decapitated uh he gets his arm lopped off by mm-hmm. a, a claw he gets smacked in the face and bloodied by a claw and then whoosh, beheaded by a gargoyle a, gargoyle. a, a gargoyle. living gargoyle yeah. that speaks that speaks what does it well, say it's a little like gremlins yeah it's a lot like the fucking space armor movie um <laughs> guyver guyver, guyver. Yeah. it's a lot like guyver it's a lot yeah. like guyver 
So yeah. and the, the gargoyle approaches him, abro- approaches James Remar, and literally says, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Hey." If you if you promise if you not shut to, the fuck up, if you promise not to tell, if you don't if you don't be a rat, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna yeah. let you live. <laughs> right. Snitches no snitch. get stitches. What yeah. do you want? No yeah. snitch. No stitch. Yeah. All right. Seems like a v- extremely fair deal. It's really yeah. fair. Yeah, don't tell live. anyone you, what you said. Literally, I just won't kill don't you. tell anyone that you saw me, and we're cool. That's Which, it. Like no That's one it. would believe That's you it. anyways. Why right. would you tell anyone? And when he said that, I'm like, well, you're getting off real easy. Yeah, <laughs> real easy for yeah. a guy for a thing that just killed right? your friend. Yeah. Yep. Which makes it all the more shocking that he still fucks it up. Yeah. Like. Well, we'll get there. We'll get I there. Guess yeah. Is the, this guy the biggest idiot in cinema? Yes. yes. Like, I mean, yes. So then you're waiting. I mean, that's the the conceit, right? You're waiting, like, I'm okay, fucking... when is he going to tell somebody? Because right. about... now he just he just keeps compulsively drawing the gargoyle. Yeah. Right. But he can't tell anyone about it. He can't no. tell anyone. Yeah. He can draw it, but he he, he yeah. hides those too because I think but, he, yes, he can't gotta, tell anyone about the gargoyle yeah. either. Tell the, what the gargoyle his, looked yeah. like. Right. But on his way home, the same night that he meets the gargoyle. He runs into a woman. Yep. And um, attacks her, <laughs> essentially. He brings her back to his place. Right. Because he's like, what are you doing out here? It's not safe. Come back to my place. You right. can use my phone. They start an intense relationship right off the bat. Yeah. Very quickly. Sex on the first date. She's crawling on, she's crawling on tables. You know, more it's, like, it's not even sex on the first date. Cause this isn't a date. It's a stranger on the street. Yeah. Saying come to my house. Saying come over. That's what's more shocking. That's the that, shocking part. Yeah. Yeah, but no, it's, she's yeah, but I mean, she's like, oh, you're an artist and all this, and she's like ready to move in with him. Right. Yeah. The, right. the very yeah. next day. So right. it's like, wow, this guy got really lucky. But she says something <laughs> along the lines of like, last night was really important to me. Last night was yes. really important to me. And, and she and- said, I you have something and I need it. Which I well, thought that would was, come you know, back in a bigger way, well, that but it was, doesn't that was really. in the moment, you know. So you got something I need. Oh yeah, right. I but I thought yeah. it was alluding to the things that happened in yeah, because she third did say act. it was important. To me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Last night was mean? really important to yeah. me. Yeah. That's that's a really it's strange the thing to red say. Flag in the world. It's a huge red, red flag. flag. Oh, oh yeah. my god! Someone said that to me. I'd be sweating, being like, "Oh my god, you're a person who didn't tell me." Oh no! I didn't even think of that. My first thought was like, "Oh no, you're a virgin." You didn't tell me. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I was getting sweaty, like hearing this conversation. Oh, shit. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> what did I oh, do? God, I... Well, she moves in. I think the very next day, right? She shows up. My girlfriend kicked me out, and here's yeah. I've got my luggage, and you know, he's yeah. like, just come no on in. To go. But while I was gone, I talked to this other friend who was a really famous art dealer. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. And, and got him a showing or a meeting with, and so then he's got shows, right? And he sells paintings for twenty three hundred dollars, twenty three thousand dollars, dollars a sculpture. Of and it's art. like, wow! So then it's like, you got to marry me, right? Because it's they don't really say how much time has passed, but it's enough time. Because then the next scene, she's like, "By the way, I'm pregnant," mm-hmm. and he's like, "By the way, marry me." Yeah, which is what she hesitates on. Yeah, that's the part she hesitates yeah, on. She's like, <laughs> yeah, but she's just like, will you marry me like this? But then she gets to theatrically shove the pillow up yeah. her shirt. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is wedded bliss. We cut to the so night happy. of the wedding. And then 10 years later. 10 years later. <laughs> 10 years later. Ooh, that was Everyone a quick 10 years. the same. Yeah, everybody looks mm. the same. I she's got, right. they got kids. Anthology is skipping time like this is kind of crazy when you think bit. about that. It's yeah. already truncated. Yeah. And now yeah. you're going to do a gigantic time jump. Like, I Whoa. get why, right. but like, is it just for the kids? Is it but, the only yeah. reason the time happens? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the it is. Because it's otherwise, the there's no reason for it to happen otherwise. It takes out so much, I think impact yeah you're headed for yeah. tragedy you gotta have the kids involved because right. the original story well, does the same i mean thing. we need the kids for a different reason and it's great <laughs> <laughs> it's very great but before that we get a really great line where she's talking about that they're celebrating the night that they met mm-hmm. and the little the daughter who we're now meeting they have a son and daughter and the daughter yes. says you mean the night that daddy you thought daddy was gonna rape you I thought I was gonna push you up against the wall <laughs> <laughs> who tells their kid that narrative all I can think of is prison mind he's like you want me to push you up against the wall <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange. It's unsettling. Uh, it was it for They're a laugh? They're very honest with yeah. each other about... They're like, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> and the agent now is uh, back representing Basically them. The godfather and, of the yeah, children. Yeah, babysitting, babysitting the kids. Them. So they can go out and relive their first, the night they met, the first date. Probably in hindsight a bad idea to bring up the night that they met. Yeah. Because I mean, like, it was yeah. a very important night to her. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And uh, she's like, you know, there's nothing more that you can give me that I don't already have. And he's like, well, hold, 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 hold my on. beer. You just hold, yeah. Hold. <laughs> what if I implode our entire make... relationship right now? Right. Because I'm about to make the biggest mistake I can make. Yeah, but it's, I get like why he's doing no. it. No. 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 Oh, oh. no. Hold on. no. I want to hear Colin justify this. Well, okay. because he is in love with her and he wants nope. to share everything nope. with her. So he's trusting nope. her and he's going to tell her about this thing that no one else would believe. Colin, you're visited a- by a gargoyle. <laughs> I just want you to think about th- that, that right like, there. That murdered it's in front someone. Of you. I know, but it spoke it, ten to years. You. It's like so far in the past. He's like forgotten all of it. That's the, he I guess, hasn't forgotten. forgotten it. Well, he hasn't draws forgotten. it every night. But it feels less real. No, he's like, no, I can tell you about this. It's, it's not going to affect. He had him. one job. Don't tell anyone. He tells her. That's it. If, if a gargoyle told me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention its existence. I stick with that. Yep. But he doesn't. You know what? I, might, you get, know, I might get weak and tell someone. You would absolutely would get weak. Cave. <laughs> You would 100% cave. You're like, I trust you. But he, I, there were, I love you. Like, I like when they say, it's like, I wouldn't tell anyone that I won the lottery, but there'd be hints. I wouldn't tell anyone I met a gargoyle, <laughs> but there'd be hints. You'd be like, have you ever met a gargoyle? Because I definitely haven't. Because <laughs> I have not. <laughs> or if we're watching something, like, gargoyles don't act like that. It's like, they sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a way he can cheat the system here, and he blows right past it. Just show her the figurine and be like, what do you think about this piece I made? Leave yeah, it at that. See, I then you're think... not exposing that this is a real. She's not going to assume this gargoyle figurine is based on a real Let's creature. Put, there's a way to do this, and yes. he does it completely wrong. He blows right, right past it. Yeah, I thought, but I cannot remember Colin, the exact you line. You would get killed by a gargoyle. I would get killed by a gargoyle. Well, would I? I don't know, but I, I'm saying I think there was a. I think the gargoyle told him, like you can't. Something about you can't describe me. I like. I think that Looking was for the part loophole? of the thing. Like you, no, but he, it was closing he, the loophole. Yeah. You can't even show anyone what I look like. Right. Uh-huh. I can't remember what it but said, but I got that impression. That it's a gargoyle versus the gargoyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, like this, does this gargoyle have specific features that make it different than other gargoyles? She like knew. If you slightly alter the appearance of yeah, what you're drawing, you a different gargoyle. Yeah, does that count? Exactly. These rules are never explored. Yeah. But I like her face in this moment because she's basically doing the Michael Scott, like, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But he does. He tells her, and yeah. then what's her reaction? Ray Dong Chong explodes into a gargoyle. <laughs> the gargoyle. You weren't supposed to tell. Yep. It's like she goes, no. You promised. <laughs> but it's painful because it comes out at all of her oh joints. It's a beautiful transformation. It's this is K and This is like K and B going. This is our it's day. Fantastic. <laughs> Why is this not mentioned in the same breath as like American Werewolf in London? Because it looks like it it's as so good. I'll, I'll tell good. you that because at the time when I saw it, it was like you had seen that. Like in the '80s, you saw prosthetic effects. All gotcha, the okay. time. So, I mean, that is kind of why watching it now, you're like, oh, this is actually, you know, but at the yeah. time you're in, inundated with that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, it makes sense. But yeah. it looks so cool, you know, like looks so the painful. sinews are tearing. Painful. There's shit like yeah. a stringy, you know. When she pulls oh. her scalp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so oh, great. great. Fully, fully the actress. Yes. I mean, she, and then puts her head it down. And, and then, yeah, yeah, pulls it around and there's this, the gargoyle head. Things are exploding on it. It is Ray John Chong for a long time yeah. until it yeah. switches. Like the knees was the one that really got me. That mm-hmm. one looked yeah, cause oh, when Yeah, when there's, when there's uh, alien, I'm going to just say alien because alien, but yeah. just body parts coming out of other body parts and breaking yeah. through. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's the stuff that gets you yeah like when there's a foot coming through an ankle or some shit like that you're just like oh it's it, no yeah, i know the position is not good it's like it's but great a, they did similar stuff in like the fly is like a, a, a close yeah, analog the, that you're you right know. when the legs break the other way yeah. at the kneecaps and everything and they but that had and, uh, i guess 
you know, like you, the fly seemed to be more of a, like you remember that one as a bigger deal than Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Yeah. Well, even though the effects work is comparable. I guess that it makes is, sense. That, yeah. Right. But that one had a lot more, uh, yeah. a lot more to build to that yeah. point. You guys were just that, so fucking Scrooge McDuck diving into beautiful <laughs> we, I effects was, scenes. I that you was. didn't realize how good you had yeah. it. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, and that's why you want to get back to it now. You're like, where can I see that? And then it's the Terrifier movies. And you're like, oh my. God, That's I not feel what so I bad. Want. But uh, <laughs> so uh, she turns into she, she is the gargoyle, and and the only thing you can think at this moment is God. I wish there was little baby gargoyles. <laughs> Sean, your timing of saying this could not have been better. I I I mean the uh, gag was no, great, but you her, set up like, the gag. It was like what are the kid? What about the kids? And, and then, then just... immediately cuts to a wide shot of both the kids <laughs> next to each other as baby gargoyles. Oh, like, it's beautiful. Oh my god, oh, it's so it's great. Horrifying. It's so it's great. So cute. But they're also adorable. adorable. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a uh, very uh they're, they're like evil vicious versions of the fucking puppets from Dark Crystal or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like gremlins. With those eyes and yeah. the long mouth. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But apparently uh, now with the fate sealed, she has to kill her lover. Yeah, and rip out his, his jugular. Yeah. It's kind of sad. I know. It's, it's, Takes yeah. the kids and flies off to the roof and turns back into Because they're standing in front of each other and he's like, I loved you. And she's I, like, I loved I you. I loved you. I yep. But you yeah. fucked up. Yeah. And he even was like, we had 10 perfect years. And he goes on and on about how perfect his life is. And that's when you're like, dude, shut the fuck well, up. Well, you shut screwed it fuck up. up. Yep. Had 10 good years. Yep. Could have had a life. She, <laughs> well, she, she kills him. She takes her gargoyle babies and flies out the window yeah. where she'd been watching him for years. Yep. Yeah. And now they're and she, perched again in yep. stone. Mm -hmm. And then we cut back to Debbie Harry's situation. Yes. She's doing. getting ready to bake this kid in an oven, but. He's got one more story to tell. His, his story, it his turns story. out, which is what? He's going to throw marbles on the floor like it's a fucking cartoon. I like that he narrates it. I guess that's the thing. It's like yeah. I'm telling a story as I'm doing it. He yeah. had marbles in his pocket and he threw them and the witch slipped on him and fell onto the, you know. Yeah. yeah. He, if only he could get the keys, you know. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. he pushes her into the oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wonder if he's got a little, little, little power, a little, little extra going on there. Or if he's just. or if It is weird to telegraph sense. your moves before you do that, and, that, and well, then and have them it happen. works out. Yeah, right. exactly. And, yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. and he still eats his cookies. Yep. Of course. Yep. And the movie she is gets, over. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's done. All right. Well, um, we are going to tell you what we thought of this movie. We're going to review it for you, let you know if you should watch it. But first, ladies and germs, uh, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. How many bodies do you think Igor has burst out of? I was going to say, do you think he's like related to gargoyles at all? I think he does that transformation every night and he just busts out of skin every night. And right. he does sit yeah. on my roof. Shedding. Yeah, he does. Every night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or does every he, day. He, yeah. Every day, not at yeah. night. Does no, he yeah. shit on your garage? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what that was? Is that what he's doing? He's angry at you, yeah. Colin. Yeah. There's yeah, something going on. We did have there. a mystery shit like, adventure. Did you change his food or something? Yeah. Like, oh, put yeah. It back. Like when you do that with cats, you can't, yeah. you got to gradually change it because otherwise it'll upset their stomach. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's definitely what happened. I had an Igor. issue. And it, okay, so it was Igor. The guy had to hose his garage off every night. Um, so we want to let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show. Uh, you can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. On X. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can email us directly. Saturday Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Jacob Laws writes oh. in and says... Uh, Tales from the Dark Side is not as good as Creep Show, but it's still a lot of fun. Best segment is The Cat from Hell, one of Stephen King's best shorts. Was that based on an actual written story? Or was it just written for Creep Show 2 and got held over? I can't remember. I never read it if it was actually written. I have no idea. Okay. I think it was. I think it was a short story. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, "I've always known the name Tales from the Dark Side from some one-off Mystery Science Theater 3000 reference, but it was many years later when I came across the movie, and it was another few years before I realized it was a TV show. This is a nice little creepy anthology movie, good for a spooky season. The only thing I really know about it is the gargoyle story is based on some old Japanese ghost story. 
That's Correct. cool. Okay, mm-hmm. there we go. Yep. James Boyce says, I have this sucker on tape, and somehow I've never gotten around to watch on tape. Tape. Wow. And never gotten around <laughs> to watching it. That's what I love about the Saturday Night Freak Show, help, <laughs> helping guide me to underappreciated gems or to totally trash. We'll get you A there. win-win. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Novato Judoka says, this is the horror anthology I grew up with. Being about the same age as baby Matthew Lawrence mm-hmm. when I first saw it on One Dark Night. Then I was afraid of cats. And now I watch this on the couch next to my cat and that has often been confused for a raccoon. Thanks for making my <laughs> Halloween better as always and happy Halloween, everyone. Oh, what a yeah. triumph. The overcoming your fear of cats and learning to love them. <laughs> I, love I love that. that. Happy Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, last week we watched a movie called Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yeah. We did, we did. Uh, and MF Mad out there doing the Lord's work again. I don't know if we mentioned that Christina Ricci had been added to the Saturday Night Freak oh, Show Wall uh, of Fame. Uh, with that movie. We did not mention that. Because Buffalo she was 66. In, yes, Buffalo cursed. 66. And Cursed. cursed. Yeah. And Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> the first Hollow, movie I go. ever brought to the Freak was Show. Was the first one? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says when this movie Sleepy Hollow came out, McFarlane Toys did indeed make action figures of multiple characters, including the Headless Horseman mm-hmm. uh, that came with the skull head of, of Walken, cool. Ichabod, the Wood Witch, the Wood Witch. The Wood yeah. And I think they may have done Katrina. Fun fact, Johnny Depp wanted to have a bunch of prosthetics done, like a hooked nose and other exaggerated facial features to make the character look more like an outcast, but everyone felt it would just be Johnny Depp with makeup, mm-hmm. so he decided his character should be more neurotic instead uh, yeah a, a good C- task yeah yeah of being johnny depp with just makeup <laughs> yeah uh mark harrison says oh i've seen this one your podcast is basically my two watch list and there's a lot of episodes i haven't listened to yet because i haven't seen the movies uh but i've seen this film so i can listen to the episode my oh, comment yay. on the film yay. is i have nothing to say oh he has nothing to say about i that mean movie? i get it it's a good it, oh. if it's Good. Sometimes there's less to say. That's true. Okay. Good. Yeah. true. Like, I assume hey. it's because it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I like that he's playing along and yeah. like not listening to it until he's seen I like the it. movie. So. Uh, Chili Morrison was looking at our social media. We posted several behind the scenes photos and he says it's funny how Tim Burton is just naturally dressed like he looks like he's in the mm-hmm. movie's ni- uh, 1779 setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The boy with the Jason tattoo says I love this movie but to answer a question about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, gotcha. there oh. is a triple X parody. Ron Jeremy plays Franklin, and that's all I no. have to say. Oh, no. Franklin. Oh, my God. That's Franklin's the kid in the wheelchair in the original yes. movie. About oh, boy. Texas Chainsaw. You know, <laughs> two of my legs don't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a joke, In the, I'm sure. It gotta be. be. It's yeah. gotta be. So it's gotta be. God damn it. That's, about, I, I could have gone not, not knowing that existed. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get. Okay. So about Texas Chainsaw 3D, which we watched, Justin Denny writes in and says, actually, there are two porn parodies of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's the Texas Dildo Massacre and the Texas Vibrator Massacre. What door did I open with that episode? My God. It's all because we said, uh, do your thing, cuz. Oh, yeah. It sounded cause, like it yes. was from a porn it, parody. It, it yeah, does. they don't roll off the tongue. Yeah. And Texas thank you, now we know better. about the porn parodies of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, and yeah, um, yep. several weeks ago, we watched Salem's Lot, and Eamon McCluster writes in and says, I was nine when this was shown on the BBC on the Monday and the Wednesday in the same week in September 1981, and it was all that anyone was talking about the next day in school not only Ralphie at the window, but also Danny springing up out of his coffin to bite Jeffrey Lewis in the neck. Also, thank you for the Psycho 2 episode. Not a film I remember fondly, but your enthusiastic review of it means I'll give it another chance. Keep up your very own public service. Aw, thank you. Thank you. Yep, give it another chance. So That's, nice. uh, that was a good one. Uh, and I also want to say Eamon McCluster. Yeah, great it's a name. Great, yeah. Name. great name. Great, great, great name. name for uh, an old uh, DiCaprio as his character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> see that. Great name for a Rick Dalton yeah. to, to yeah. Eamon McCluster. Eamon McCluster. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. only because I think he plays McCluskey oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the yeah. movie. Yeah. One yeah. of his characters mm-hmm. is named McCluskey. Well, we want to thank each of you sincerely uh, yes, for writing you. in. We appreciate yes. it. Yes, we love you. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, starting with... Michaela! What did you think about Tales from the Dark Side, the movie? I mean, man, I love a horror anthology, especially around spooky time. 
Uh, I think it's better for my attention span a lot of the time. <laughs> um, but, man, every anthology, there's one standout, there's one middling, and there's one weak How one. How do you rank them? Yeah, um, I, I was going to, I I'm not going to lie, I was a little worried after the first one because... Oh boy, that first one is boring. Yep. Like, I'm sorry, yep. the first one's boring. It doesn't have any gore. It doesn't have any good suspense. It's just kind of like, okay, cool. There's a dusty mummy like hunting. Yeah, people. it's not the best one. It takes a long time to get going too. There's a lot of back and forth. You know, it's cool that it's Christian Slater and Steve Buscemi, but it that's not enough to carry that. That is my least favorite for sure. My favorite being uh, Lovers Vow, obviously, okay. and then um, Cat from Hell being the second. I I kind of like. We, there's a cat one in every anthology. It Seems feels like, like it. you know. So it's just like, how much more cat stuff can I see? Especially because like Sleepwalkers, that is like the ultimate cat movie, ultimate. right? So yeah. like, you're never gonna <laughs> yeah. hit the highs of Sleepwalkers again. So Strays is a, Strays, a junior champion. In Strays that is pretty good though, especially for Lucio being Lucio Fulci, the cat in the brain. No, yeah. it's uh, the black. He did the black. Yeah. Cat. yeah. But and I will say it does get points for not killing the cat because it killed four thousand of them. It did not. Killed this cat lived. It killed 4,000 cats. This cat, no. mur- it, it was 5,000. I was, mean, yeah, you may as well just add yeah. the extra. But it was the opposite. This cat <laughs> killed people instead of the cat getting killed. So yes. I, I'm down for that. Yeah, I mean, zero lovers. cat deaths in this movie. 5,000. Yeah. Zero. But I, yeah, I love a horror anthology. I think you just got to accept the good with the bad and kind of stick out the slower ones with it because you know it's going to come to an end within, you know, 20, 25 minutes max, probably. Yeah. So, you know, just stick it out and go through it. Um, I, so I definitely am going to recommend it. I'm glad I watched it. I like seeing like the star sort of cast and the stars behind the scenes. Like seeing K and B, I think that got me more excited than anything. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I was disappointed in the mummy one because I'm like, okay, I know you got the K and B team here. Why are they here if you're not going to show me anything? But then when we got to Ray Dong Chong turning into the gargoyle, that went on for so long and it looked so good. And like we were audibly reacting to some of the grossness of it. And like, and, Kane, and a cat crawling in and out of Buster Poindexter. Right. And I'm also <laughs> just like, I'm always a sucker for like someone transforming and being like devastated about it. You know, like I love <laughs> yeah. that. So, um, tear, maybe. yeah, I love just being like, you, like you're forcing me to do this. I don't want to do this, but this is like, this I is loved my fate. you. Yeah. Um, loved it. Love that story. Even if it didn't start off making total sense. Um, I kind of feel like with anthologies, I'm more forgiving of plot holes because they're moving at a faster clip. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm going to recommend it. Colin, what'd you think? Um, it's a funny thing that time does to you because, uh, you know, I think oh. like, uh, Michaela is saying, like I was, uh, swimming in a, in a pool of awesomeness yes. in the 1980s and seeing prosthetic effects and horror movies, like all the time that were like studio pictures, independent movies, but they all had like this, like, you know, prosthetic effects was having its time. Um, I grew up on the television show uh, when I've gone back and tried to watch episodes of them. Yeah, how was it? It's, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was at the time they were creepy. Sure. Uh, or, you know, because it probably because I was a kid. A little more hokey now? They're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just so cheap, you know. I mean, it's it was a very budget uh, television sure. show that they were cranking out. Um what, what did it air on? Like, what, it was these syndicated. Rated, these rated R, okay, so not rated R tales? No, it was... Uh, I think that might be a problem. They just... They, so, like, the any channel could have it, and oh, they God. aired them whenever the fuck they wanted. And I remember, like, I hated football games because they ran late into the Tales from the Dark Side <laughs> time slot at, like, 6.30 on a... On a Sunday afternoon, um, uh, gotcha. so uh, uh, that was that was my uh, you know coming of age. Um, looking back at it now, though, you know it's like because uh, it, it, you know it it does kind of it's like this relic of this era because you're not seeing like a bunch of them, so it kind of stands out, and you're like, actually, this is like a fairly well crafted movie. Uh, I love the um, progression, I guess. Like maybe that's what, how I took the effects work. It's like, we're starting off, you know, kind of subtle. We're going more explicit. And then finally we're going Go like full, you know, it goes out with a bang. Yeah. So I think the stories are actually um, like Michaela was saying, you judge them based on how good the stories are. It progress. It goes from like, um, you know, it starts out, you know, slower, and cranks itself up to the best. And we've always talked about 
the, how a, how an anthology is constructed down here. Yeah. Like this is always part of the discussions. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. do you start out with a bang and end with a bang? You do. Do you, do you have yes, to build up to the bang? To. Yeah, you have like, to. And then you, you put how, your, how your weaker put ones together? in the middle. Yeah. You know. And then, so you got to start strong and end strong, but well, you got to end stronger than you started. Yes. But definitely. you have to start strong. So your middle one is mm-hmm. usually the weaker one. Um, this one I thought was the, it, like, it, it this got felt like better. The ramp. Yeah, 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 it ramped start up. Start to finish. So it was like, okay, um, you know, it, it's cool to see, I think, like we were saying, like all these uh, folks who you recognize in this old horror movie. Um, that was just cool. I, I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Uh, you got to see Tales from the Dark Side. The movie, Sean, what'd you think? The movie, yeah. It's uh, it's it's fun. Uh, I, I had a good time tonight. Again, uh, I mean, everything we've said tonight about this movie. Uh, I, yeah, I think it was pretty much... Um, as far as an anthology goes, constructed in a in a in a good way. Again, the ramp up for this one really worked for it, um, especially when you know you have KB doing the effects, and we really topped it off at the end. Um, Story wise, I think yeah, we progressed from start to finish pretty good as well. Yeah, uh, just a, like a solid movie. Like uh, I'd recommend it to anybody to watch. It's like you'll, yeah, you'll find something in this to like. Um, uh, whether you like or dislike cats or gargoyles, uh, you're, you're going to get a lot out of this one. Yeah, just a fun, good, solid time. I liked it. Uh, I'll recommend Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. I won't recommend the show. The movie I will, though. So, yeah, I think you should watch it. Uh, Holly, uh, take us home. Um, apologize for the 4,000, 5,000 mm-hmm. cat deaths. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Please. no cat deaths in this movie. Um, yeah, I thought what better way to round out spooky season than with spooky. a horror anthology. I feel, of course. I feel like it's it's the best way to, to go out. It's made for it. I think so. Um, yeah, I agree with whatever. I think we're all on the same page on this one. It it, it the Deborah Harry wraparound story is fantastic. I mean, it, it's just it's just fun. It's a fun story. Um, and then the segments. Yeah, I was really nervous when it started out. I was real nervous, but. Yeah, I agree. I think I think it ramped up. I think it got it got even better as it went on. Um, I think it's entertaining. Um, I think the special effects eventually become just re- just really really remarkable. Uh, that gargoyle transformation was outstanding. It's so gross. It's so ugh. yeah. I I thought it was great. The cat coming in and out of the mouth was horrifying and wonderful. Um, yeah, I thought this was a fun movie. For sure. I'm going to recommend it. Yeah. No more notes. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's just, it's fun. It's fun. So, yeah, I'm going to recommend it for sure. All right. Well, that means all four of us have recommended Tales from the Dark Side of the movie. So, contractually, by listening to the show, you're obligated to watch it. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. And if you don't, a gargoyle will show up. There you mm-hmm. go. And uh, mm-hmm. behead you. Uh, make love to you. I don't know. Uh, it kind of depends <laughs> on you. Either, either way, it sounds like a party. Right. Yeah. 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 Either way, you're going to need something out of it. Not many gargoyle movies out there. No, no I appreciate There's still that. that movie Gargoyles. Yeah, yeah. But I still haven't seen it. So uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Michaela, what are we going to watch next week? We are in turkey season. We're in turkey season. We're also in an election year. Oh, fuck. Oh, boy. We're, we're going to watch the purge? the purge Anarchy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's not the first one. The second one. one. It's the second okay. one. Okay. Oh, it's not the, the first Frank one. It's Grillo the second one. It's the Frank debut. Grillo one. Okay. Okay. Because okay. okay. yeah. okay. I've seen the first one. I was not impressed. The first one is one of the worst ones, believe it or not. Okay, good. We'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into okay. it. Okay. It was the last one, but not election year. Was that the no, last one? No, that's the third one. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. The third one. Yeah. Okay. The Purge Anarchy is the second one. 2014 is 10 years old now. So Okay. All right. Next week, The Purge Anarchy on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, The basement is going dark.